I've been doing this thing on shorts recently where I am trying to go through my whole collection of Lego Star Wars minifigures and so far we're a good chunk of the way through. We've gone through all our Luke minifigures, our Kenobi minifigures, I think we've got Bounty Hunters coming up soon so definitely head over to the playlist. I'll leave it linked on the end card. You can go there after this video and let me know what characters you'd like to see that we perhaps haven't already covered. There'll be a few duplicates in certain categories but my aim is to cover absolutely every lego star wars minifigure that i own over on that series so i'm actually going to switch up my shorts rather than trying to promote my videos because you all seem to be watching both of my content both videos and shorts i'm going to switch to doing that daily in the hopes that in the next few months we can cover every star wars minifigure i own there's not really an end goal to it. I'm going to constantly be getting new Star Wars minifigures. So potentially this could be a series that goes on forever as long as the channel lives. So thank you for all your support over there. And that has inspired today's video, taking a look at some older minifigures, especially with some of the Star Wars ones I had displayed in the top from the 20th anniversary. I haven't picked up Darth Maul yet. But I'd like to get the Darth Maul from the book. If you weren't aware, there is a bonus 25th anniversary minifigure in one of the new LEGO Star Wars books. I'd like to pick that up once I've picked up the Skimitar so that I've got the very first and the most recent Darth Maul, which both look very different to the one that I have. But we've got a ton of minifigures, so I think we'll just get straight into it and start looking at, first up, the X-Wing pilot version of Luke Skywalker. Also, what do you think? Also, how are you finding these intros? Let me know down in the comments as well as what other minifigures you'd like to see over in the shorts because it's a bit different to my fixed camera. And I know when I asked previously, it was 50-50, but now my camera work is a bit better. So how are we feeling about these personalized intros? So I do have four different versions of Luke. One I will reveal to you in a minute, but starting off, with this very first version of X-Wing Luke with the yellow head and it's very similar to the second one. The biggest difference is actually the detailing on the chest piece and the face. There isn't much else besides that. It looks to be perhaps some outlines on the helmets but the biggest jump isn't even when they added leg printing and decided to get the torso print correct to the A New Hope version but it's when they then gave Luke printed arms and dual molded legs for the UCS version. These have been nicked off the keyring next to it. You can buy the UCS Luke keyring and then switch the arms and legs out for a regular minifigure, such as the one that comes in the new Luke Skywalker X-Wing mech, which I've been having a lot of fun with recently, even though I'm yet to pick up the set and probably never will. But I really like the dual molded legs. I think that is the biggest upgrade to a Luke Skywalker. Add in the boots on the bottom. You can get the arms custom printed from Firestar. In fact, I do have a set of arms that I've now moved to my Wedge Antilles. And they don't look as good as Legos. Legos arms are definitely a bit better than these custom Firestar printed ones. If I can get the camera to focus. But... They definitely do the job. They're a bit more detailed, if you like, more detail in like the Clone Army Customs compared to Grandpa Clone Customs. These are probably the arms for you, but I really like what LEGO have done to improve the figure. And taking a look from the first to the last, they almost look like completely different minifigures if you didn't know who the character was. One character that many of you perhaps might think we've seen way too much of is the Tatooine Farm Boy Luke, which... There is a version with the blue milk. I didn't realize it goes for 90 odd pound in a sealed poly bag. So I definitely won't be picking it up anytime soon. But I do think there's a big, big improvement that Lego can do for quite a few of these minifigures actually. And it's something that I've made a video on on this channel before. You can see we've gone once again from the yellow skin tones to the more realistic skin tones opposed to Lego's original yellow. But the designs didn't change too early on. In fact, I actually quite like the tan boots. I think the next step for the legs would be for Lego to dual mold some tan and white legs for Luke. And that would look absolutely amazing. It would just bring that extra detail to the character who otherwise just has quite a regular white torso. I really like the poncho as well that they added. It's a shame we didn't get something like this for Cal Kestis, especially 
with Qui-Gon getting a poncho in the Sith Infiltrator. I don't know why Lego didn't give Cal a poncho, but the only upgrade I think I can make to this minifigure is having the correct color hair. Now, Luke has dark tan later on in the original trilogy. I don't know if it's one of them things like the old TIE Fighter playsets used to be gray and blue, no, black and blue instead of black and gray because of the lighting of the scene and the blue screens reflecting off the gray on the TIE Fighter. It's probably similar that all the sand around Tatooine, they probably think that Luke's hair is a bit brighter than it actually is, but I do think Luke Skywalker needs to have a darker tan hairpiece in the next land speeder because we all know we're going to get one pretty soon. Another character that might show up in that land speeder and does need an upgrade is old Ben Kenobi. You can see once again, yellow skin tone, realistic skin tone. There's definitely an upgrade, but I don't know if it's that much compared to the robes we got on the following Kenobi. They look really, really cool. I'm not sure if they're as good as the attack of the clone robes that we get on the prequel Kenobi, but at least this Kenobi does have a hood on his back, which the other one definitely misses out not having. Now, as far as an upgrade, you might have seen a community post from me complaining about Jules Verne using this Kenobi head with the old grey Tarkin hairpiece. And there was also a bit of a miscommunication from me, it is on my behalf, about the hairpiece being new. That's not what I was trying to get with the community post. What I was saying is it's the first time that hairpiece has been used with the Kenobi head, which they have used for a few different minifigures. And that is my upgrade for the next Kenobi, getting that hairpiece as well as some printed legs. These are legs off of one of the sand people on Tatooine. And I think they do a good enough job if Lego just want to directly use that piece. But I think the hairpiece better represents Alec Guinness than the older one we're used to seeing. And it just makes that figure look just more like the character portrayed on screen. A minifigure that hasn't seen that many updates, but to be fair, didn't really need that many is Princess Leia here. You can see the biggest upgrade is the dress piece, which had to be covered for this video because it is a big upgrade for this character. The hair has had slight updates and so has the face printing over time. We've got a few different versions of them, all roughly the same, but the biggest difference is of course this dress piece. And Leia has so many outfits generally. It's nice to see they are still upgrading some of the old ones and hopefully we get similar treatment for Padme in the future. And speaking of Padme, we have Padme's personal assistant slash protocol droid here, C-3PO. Originally not looking as robotic, I guess, as 3PO does, more like a stone statue or gold statue in this case. And then we get that very nice silver bit on the leg. I think that is the key part that they missed on the original. Now, we do have a dual molded leg. Yes, that is singular for the gold and silver half and half. For the land speeder, Lego haven't made a key ring on that yet, so I'm unable to get it. But they have given us the arm printing in, well, it's a lot easier to get than just buying a UCS set. Quite a few. I know we got it in the Yavin set, but we're yet to get a fully gold C-3PO in a set, which is why I've taken the top half from the original trilogy C-3PO and the bottom half of the sequel trilogy polybag that gave us the fully gold legs with the side of leg printing and created my own prequel trilogy C-3PO, which I think looks really, really cool. And that is going to be my hopes for the next C-3PO we get, especially if it's a prequel one. We don't really get any prequel C-3PO's. We haven't really got many of the naked C-3PO's, especially the one where his head gets replaced with a battle droid and vice versa. I'd love to get something like that, but it's just not the easiest thing for LEGO to do. A really easy step that LEGO need to take next time we get R2-D2 is, well, first off, let's take a look at the old and new R2-D2. There was a big improvement in the head, not really anything in the torso, and there have been a few other versions We've got a dirty, scruffed up Dagobah R2-D2. We've also got back printing now on the new R2-D2s, which is nice. But we're still yet to get a third leg for R2-D2. You can see it just uses two pieces. It uses one of them frying pan studs and a rounded off tile. And that just makes R2 look so much better than 
nothing there. I know people use cheese slopes with little unicorn horns and different combinations like that. I think this is the easiest for Lego to include. It is completely legal, doesn't bend any of the rubber pieces, and it's just an upgrade compared to the other two droids we've got previously. Another minifigure that has got a recent, well, I'm not going to say upgrade just yet, is Yoda. We've seen in the past with his Clone Wars torso, they originally had it a lot redder than it should have been with white hair, soon fixing it to the, his grey hair we see on screen, and well, less of a bright torso. And then we got the prequel trilogy, the movie accurate Yoda with that better head mold. And that for a long time was actually used as the original trilogy Yoda. I remember picking up a set with this Yoda in, in the original trilogy. And it took us a while, but eventually we got a more screen accurate costume, which is very different to the others. And it comes with the same headpiece. But then LEGO decided to change this when it came to the High Republic. Now, for my upgraded minifigure, I've just whacked Yoda's head and hands from the original prequel trilogy on this High Republic torso, and I think this is an amazing minifigure. I'd love to get some more High Republic minifigures other than Yoda and the Padawans from the Young Jedi Adventures TV show, which actually... It's quite a decent show if you've got the time to have it on in the background. Hopefully we get some minifigures from Acolyte and these costumes look really, really cool. I mean, the Jedi robes look awesome. And you cannot have Jedi unless you have clone troopers. Actually, that is quite literally the whole premise of Acolyte. There are no clone troopers about and it's just the Jedi Garden. Well, forget I said anything, but we do have the 501st here, which... Big upgrade between these first two. Can you notice what the difference is between the middle two? I'll give you a second to try and spot the difference. And if you haven't spotted by now, the biggest difference between the next two clones is on the side of their helmets. You can see this first one doesn't have any helmet holes. The second one does. I really am a big fan of the helmet holes. How else am I meant to modify my 187th Windows Legion of clones? If they don't have the helmet holes for me to add all the different accessories, I really like the helmet holes. They could have been placed a bit better, perhaps not further down, but perhaps we could have got just the one hole on the side like they used to be. And you're probably wondering how on earth are we going to beat this Captain Rex minifigure? What can be better than a Captain Rex at that price arm printing? Well, some people might say to add a Karma. I haven't actually gone on the Karma approach at this time, but instead, I have decided to ask Lego for some hairs for our clone troopers. They go through so much effort to give us these custom faces for Commander Cody, Captain Rex, and Fives has a custom face, but we can't see it if they don't give us the hair pieces for it. So this goes with Cody as well, though. Fives definitely is the better looking Lego minifigure with the printed arms. And I'd just love some hair pieces to go with some of the clones. Rex doesn't need one. Rex is absolutely fine with his nice shiny stud on top of his head. But especially clone troopers like Fives, it was a one-off. They could have given us a hair for Fives. They could have given us a poncho for Cal. The anniversary minifigures aren't as great as they could have been. But at least the other minifigures in with Fives were, because this new Stormtrooper is amazing. I think it's only the second time it's shown up after the Stormtrooper mech. And it's definitely a better way to get your hands on them. You can see the original Trooper on the left. Then we have the update for the Rebel show. Then we have the big wave of original trilogy sets we got at one point with all the Troopers with the Black Hips. Biggest update. They have updated printing, but the big difference is the hips. And I think the hips make all the difference. The only real improvement you can make more than this besides perhaps some toe printing, is to get yourself some custom printed arms like the ones I have here. Again, use my code, it'll be in the description. It gets you an extra 10% off shopping on Firestar. And you could also add some faces underneath though. Once again, with the helmets on, you're not really going to see them. So I don't have an easy upgrade for these Stormtroopers. Custom arms and perhaps some toe printing from LEGO would be welcome in the next few years. But I'm a big fan of this helmet, mainly because it doesn't leave as much a gap at the bottom. Though you can still see there is definitely a gap at the back of these helmets, so it doesn't completely eliminate them, but they're also dual molded rather than printed, so you can see the details just that little bit nicer than we previously got. A helmet that was definitely welcomed being replaced was this Snowtrooper. I mean, 
look at it the back was also molded with the helmet it wasn't amazing so they upgraded that and then decided to give us an upgraded torso not only torso but leg printing as well with some nicer colored gloves and this isn't the only imperial troop as we also got a very similar update at some point for the scout troopers you can see between the first two there is so much that has been improved but they didn't stop there they then gave us a hoth scout trooper as well in slightly different colored uniform which does look amazing and the same upgrades are present on the atst drivers on the left and the at80 pilots on the right they've just made them so much more accurate and i'm so happy that we're even seeing figures as common as these troopers and pilots getting the upgrades that they deserve so let me know what your favorite minifigure upgrade is down in the comments personally that ultimate collector's series luke skywalker in his x-wing costume is probably one of my favorite minifigures in my whole collection and there's definitely quite a few in my collection thank you for making it to the end of the video don't forget to like on your way out and subscribe for more awesome lego star wars content and that's all for today's video may the bricks be with you always